Hey chemistry students, let's talk a little bit about the Metal Reactivity Lab. So this is a pretty simple, straightforward lab. Um, it's a good carryover from the lab that you did on um, is a substance a metal, non-metal, or metalloid today. Um, so the purpose of this lab is to test very met various metals um, and look at how they react with one another. And we're ultimately going to use the data from our data table to rank them um, from most to least reactive. Um, the only materials you're going to need are your well plate, a little stir stick, and maybe your distilled water wash bottle um, for cleaning things off. <clears throat> our safety concerns are also pretty straightforward. Uh, make sure you wear your safety glasses, aprons are optional, um, and wash your hands before leaving the lab. Um, I'm going to talk about the procedure as we look at our data table. Um, so this is kind of an example of what your data table is going to look like. You can see that we have four solid metals um, that we are using, that we're testing. They are just written as that solid um, metal, um, not as an ionic compound with that metal in it. So we have copper, magnesium, zinc, and silver. And each of these represents an ionic solution that contains that metal. Because metals are always solid, for the most part, at room temperature, when we put them in a in um, an ionic compound, um, we create an ionic substance that is soluble in water. Um, so all of these are aqueous solutions, um, ionic compounds that contain that different metal in a compound that have been put into solution. So the data table kind of looks like what your well plate is going to look like if you can picture the little wells on your well plate and there's some x's in here um, which <clears throat> will make sense of in a minute so i'm going to start by reacting copper with magnesium nitrate i don't need to put copper in with copper nitrate because i know that copper isn't going to react with copper so in I'm going to scoot over to the little second well in on my well plate so that my well plate looks just like my data table. I'm going to take a little piece of solid copper metal. I'm going to put a little, um, a few drops of magnesium nitrate solution into this well, and I'm going to observe either there's a reaction or there's no reaction. That's all I have to write. Now let's make sense of what um, those results are going to indicate for us. If, for example, I put copper and magnesium nitrate into the same well and nothing happens, there is no evidence of a chemical reaction, then I didn't form any new product, I didn't break any bonds, and here's how I interpret that no reaction. If nothing happens, what I'm saying is that copper must be less reactive than magnesium. Copper wasn't able to react with the magnesium in this solution and bump it out of there nothing happened no reaction so copper is less reactive than magnesium if on the other hand i put copper and magnesium together in a little well and i do see evidence of a chemical reaction it's bubbles and fizzes i see little solid precipitate form what i can infer there if a reaction did occur is that the individual metal must have been more reactive than the metal in solution. This copper was able to bump that magnesium out of there and take its place. Because of that, magnesium ended up as little solid metal that came out of solution and the copper replaced it. So once more, one of two things can happen. No reaction, and I interpret that as that my individual metal is less reactive than the metal in the compound, or I have evidence of a chemical reaction, in which case the individual metal was more reactive than the metal in the, um, the solution, and it was able to bump that out and replace it. Um, there's a couple terms that we use to describe um, metal and nonmetal ions. A cation is when I take a metal and it forms an ion. Metals are electron losers and form positive ions. Therefore, a cation is a positive ion. Conversely, an anion is when a nonmetal, um, an electron gainer, gains that negative particle, forming a negative ion. So those are two terms that you need to know. And then just to make sure that we're clear why those X's are there, 
copper can't react with the copper in the compound itself. Magnesium can't react with the magnesium in the compound, etc. Um, good luck. See you in lab.